What is going on everybody? So in this video, I want to talk about what I think are currently the three best quote-unquote meta defenses in Madden 18 right now. So this list, very subjective, obviously. Honestly, right now, defense is in a weird spot. I feel like almost everything is viable. Um, problem and don't care about ice won uh, the Las Vegas tournament along with the Jets Club Series, respectively, by basically running 4-3 normal cover 2 every play. So I think you can pretty much run kind of whatever you want as of right now with the defense and the patches that are kind of changing things like the cornerback contains. So defense, like I said, kind of in a weird spot. So it's very, very subjective. I think everybody's going to have different opinions. This just so happens to be mine. So number three right here, I'm going to stick with the nickel 335 normal Tampa 2. Now, this is a defense that really caught on at the beginning of the year and has basically stayed in the meta as the year has gone on. As you see right here, this is kind of the setup a lot of people do. They go with the double edge pressure. And right there, it kind of gets picked up, but you're sending five. You might get a guy free with a block shed. I think, personally, it stacks up very well against Gun Bunch as well uh, because of the fact that, as you see right here, you can see I can go hard flat, cloud flat, since it's a cover two shell on the left side. You can have your outside corner and a cloud flat, and then that right outside linebacker, left of screen uh, linebacker right there in a hard flat. And then on the right side, you can go hard flat with your, or you can go cloud flat, whichever. It's, it's personal preference. And then you can use the middle linebacker and take away that corner route if you have them in a hard flat, or you can take away the flat route if you have them in a cloud flat. So, and that's kind of a good corner strike defense, which is a popular play, obviously, out of Gun Bunch, pretty much the staple out of that formation, along with stuff like PA Post. Um, so I think this defense just matches up well against the meta offense, if you will. And I think that's also kept it relevant right there. You see screams off the left edge. And that's really what you want to see as we go into instant replay here. That defensive end, this is just kind of what happens out of this 3-3-5. It gets glitchy where he just kind of gets double teamed a lot of the time for no reason by the left tackle and left guard. And it lets that, you know, nickel cornerback come screaming off the edge right there. Trey Waynes, especially if you have a guy who's that fast, he's going to get there really, really quickly. And so that's just something that, that happens out of this nickel 335 defense. Obviously, aside from that, you can make your backside adjustments. You don't even have to run Tampa 2 every play if you don't like Tampa 2. That's just a defense right there. Trey Waynes gets uh, actually tripped by the left tackle, but then you get the interior block shed. So that's another good thing. You're rushing four or five usually with this setup. So even if it doesn't come in every time, and it's definitely not going to, you can still get those block sheds. You're still sending a decent amount of pressure. Get them uneasy in the pocket and make them work for their completions. Right there, once again, Trey Wayne's off the left side. You don't even have to blitz the backside cornerback, Xavier Rhodes. I'm just doing this because this is kind of the way a lot of people do it right there. Five-man protection actually holds up, and that's the kind of situation where you're going to have to make a play over the middle with your user defender, uh, especially in this type of defense. If you're selling out and putting everybody in a cloud flat or hard flat, you're really putting the onus on you to take away the entire middle of the field. Right here, you're going to see, once again, the five-man rush. Xavier Rhodes this time's coming off the right edge, kind of loops around, gets picked up, and then Trey Waynes comes off the backside and ends up making a play. So, as you see, pretty consistent right here. Number two, dollar three two six. Now, after the patch where they changed the cornerback contains to where you can't basically contain with the slot cornerbacks anymore, I think a lot of people thought dollar would be dead. Um, I think it definitely changed the setup. You have to go with DB fire two press, but dollar still has this crossfire three press right here that I still think is personally, I still think is the best a blitzing concept in the game obviously that's very subjective other people probably have other opinions but that's just me kind of what I'm comfortable in that's what I've been running basically all year is a form of this type of blitz that you'll see a little bit later but essentially it boils down to you isolating this left guard and so it's basically this left guard right here he's gonna have to pick this left tackle is gonna guard uh, gonna block the defensive end so the left guard has to pick either I want to slide over and help the Defend, or help the left tackle pick up the defensive end and then the left tackle usually slides out to the cornerback or he's got to pick up the looping linebacker coming through the middle and if he does that then the cornerback comes in off the edge so you really put that left guard in a no-win situation and that's why this 
play and this blitzing concept has been so successful this year it's basically been the most popular right there loop comes in left guard picks him up and the corner actually trips on the left tackle right there still get an interior block shed with fletcher cox but that's basically what you're going to see if the left guard picks up the linebacker patrick robinson should come off that that nickel or the in this case it's dollar three two six so out of that slot cornerback right there uh, Kendricks loops through the left guard doesn't pick him up he picks up the defensive end the left tackle slides out and the linebacker loops through so that's basically the one or two outcomes that you're going to see with this defense and a lot of people have tried many different things the ID the mic really doesn't work on picking up that looping linebacker and that's kind of where the problem comes in and why this blitzing concept is so effective a lot of people will ID the slot cornerback and then basically just try to evade the looping linebacker by sliding in the pocket right there the corner comes off the edge once again the defensive end actually got double teamed right there but that's kind of the the most popular way to try and you know combat this blitzing defense is to essentially make sure you pick up that slot cornerback and then just try to have the pocket presence right there. You slide up in the pocket, try to evade that looping linebacker and make a play. But um, it's still a very consistent blitzing concept. Now, the play that really got hit the most out of the dollar three two six formation, which is the complement to the crossfire, which I think is a reason makes dollar so potent, is the DB fire two press that was super popular last year. Also pretty decent again this year. Now, obviously right here, as you can see, you can't contain the cornerbacks anymore. So now whenever you contain, it's the defensive ends and the cornerbacks stay on their blitzing angles where they're pretty sharp. They're no longer basically looping around. That was the problem was they would loop around and they'd be so wide that the tackles wouldn't pick them up and they'd come in off the edge, not every time, but pretty consistently. So I think what you're going to see people doing, I still think this is definitely a viable defense, uh, but basically what you're going to see now is what I've seen to be the most effective setup for this now is to just crash your D-line down and then basically hover, take that left of screen linebacker and hover right there basically over the left guard. And so a lot of people will set up these types of defenses just like you see right here with that other linebacker in a deep middle third. And so you have him basically sinking back. That's a lot of against like gun bunch, stuff like that. He can guard that PA post route decently. He can just kind of murk up those, you know, deep middle of the field post routes that you see a lot of people running and make those reads just a little more sketchy for the offense to kind of per persuade them not to throw it, you know? So, uh, and then basically you're using your user, you're counting on yourself to just guard the entire intermediate and shallow middle of the field right here. So, um, you definitely have to be comfortable with that, but as you see right there, hover over the left guard, both corners are going to come in free, not every single time, sometimes neither corner comes in, so I don't think this blitz is, I don't think really any blitz is 100% foolproof this year, which is a good thing in my opinion, but you're going to see pretty consistent pressure with maybe not both, but right there the right side cornerback comes free, so it might be the right one, might be the left one, might be both. Um, you know, every now and then neither might come in. You might get them both picked up. And in that situation, you're still rushing five. So you're going to have that passive pressure. You might get a block shed and you're going to have to kind of rely on your defense a little more on the back end with the coverage right there. Both corners come free once again. So you can see mixing this up along with the crossfire can definitely cause problems for your opponent. Now, I will say the crossfire does have a pretty um, telling signal that they're you're running the crossfire in that. Uh, whenever you run crossfire right here before I run DB fire to press this linebacker will kind of creep up into the box instead of right there he'll be like right around here and so a savvy opponent will be able to see although you know it looks somewhat similar a savvy opponent will still be able to tell okay he's in crossfire right here okay now he's not in crossfire he's probably in DB fire to press or cover four or whatever it might be so although yeah you're mixing up your plays and blitzes out of the same formation there is one obvious tell still very effective to kind of mix it up you know in the heat of the moment your opponent might not pick up on it who knows it's definitely still a very effective scheme going back between those two in my opinion so uh, that's kind of what you're going to see and in the next and my number one blitz uh or number one defense rather coming up right here that's another example you're going to see in the nickel 335 odd uh crossfire or linebacker cross three show two rather um that's basically another tell that you're going to see, although this formation doesn't have the DB Fire 2 press complement to it. Uh, it's basically crossfire and maybe cover four out of this formation that you see most of the time, but it's almost always crossfire. But this blitz is so consistent, and it's it's just a very well-balanced formation. It's essentially 3-4 odd without 
you know, you're, you're exchanging that left side linebacker for a nickel cornerback and you're sliding him out. So it still has pretty good leverage against like the run, especially with the cover four out of here. And then obviously the longbacker cross three show two, very consistent. Uh, right here, a little quick tip. If you don't want to manually slide that cornerback, that nickel cornerback up to the line of scrimmage, basically make him look like he's in a press situation. Uh, what you can do is when you break the huddle, uh, you want to go ahead and show blitz. And then whenever they get set, you show blitz again to basically retract it. And everybody will move back. And instead of moving back, he'll just slide right out over the slot receiver. Or if there's nobody there, he'll just slide right there. And basically, um, you'll get him to move up and look like he's in a press situation without having to manually move him. Might save you a second or two, whatever. Just a little quick tip. You don't even have to bother doing it. But as you see the setup right here, really simple spread line, pinch them down, and then blitz that nickel back. And you're looking at the same exact setup from the dollar three two six crossfire. Same exact concept, isolating the left guard. He's got to pick either he wants to slide out to the defensive end and the left tackle kicks out to the cornerback and the middle linebacker loops through, or he picks up the linebacker and the nickelback comes off the edge. So you're really putting that left guard in a no-win situation here. And you can pretty much adjust the coverage on the backside however you want. I know uh, if you shade down, that three receiver hook, Sendejo, plays very aggressively. And so uh, that's that's a concept people have been using to basically, you know, you're sending the pressure, you have a user defender coming, or not a user defender, a CPU defender coming down playing very aggressively, which is very rare. He really gets up in the middle of that defense and will play basically any, like, you know, drags, in routes, slant routes, very, very aggressively, which is rare for a CPU defender. And so that helps a lot taking away quick reads, especially when you're t you're sending the pressure. And that's the main thing you're usually worried about is you don't want to give them, you know, something super quick right off the right off the bat as soon as they snap the ball. So having him doing that and along with your user defender underneath can really put your opponent in a bind right there cornerback comes off the left edge once again Trey Waynes and so it's just going to be you really the, the same exact concept as uh, that dollar uh, three two six crossfire you're going to see really really consistent um, and like I said pretty much the blocking scheme offensively uh, you can do whatever you want but that linebacker is still going to come through there's uh, in my experience there's nothing that 100 percent blocks that linebacker and the best way to avoid him is just to have good pocket presence and step up in the pocket right here slide protect to the left linebacker still comes in uh, as you would expect slide protect to the left pick up that cornerback linebacker still loops through um it's mainly because that right guard will never slide over uh, what really needs to happen is essentially uh, to block this, you, you really need, this guy needs to pick up the cornerback, the left guard needs to slide over, the center needs to pass off, he either needs to pass off uh, the defensive tackle, or essentially the center can engage the defensive tackle, and the right guard needs to slide right in here, which, if you slide left, that's something that probably should happen, but that's not how it happens, and so because of that, uh, that basically makes this blitz very, very effective. So, you're going to see right here, once again, slide left, Sent, the right guard actually picks him up right there a little bit so that'll happen every now and then but even then right there he barely clipped him it still makes a very muddy pocket for you uh, as the quarterback and so the the pressure still basically makes an impact on the play right here once again slide to the left gonna go ahead and try to id the mic and once again he comes in looping through so as you can see right here uh the blitz very very effective very efficient and basically comes through almost every time but once again uh, maybe like 90% of the time I would say right here we're gonna go ahead and slide protect to the left try and pick up that linebacker once again we're gonna go ahead and ID the outside cornerback which is something that a lot of people like to do once again and right there you see they pick up the corner and the linebacker still loops through so very very effective concept uh, I still think the crossfire is the most effective blitzing concept you see people do it at a dollar you see people do it at a nickel three three five odd you've seen I mean I've seen people do it out of three four odd I've seen some people do it out of four three like under uh, with some success so definitely the most popular blitzing concept as of right now so that was those were my three uh, best meta defenses in my opinion like i said list is very subjective defense is in a weird spot right now where almost everything is viable um but i would stick with that nickel 335 normal the dollar 326 and the nickel 335 odd 
as you know my personal favorites the 335 odd tried and tested you know skimbo won the madden classic with it and uh, i think matster gamer was running it in that dmv tournament where he lost in the finals to joel so he had a very good showing with it um, a lot of people are running that dollar three two six and then the nickel three three five odd you still see a lot of people bring that out uh, in their arsenal so hope you guys enjoyed this video definitely comment let me know what you guys thought uh, let me know if there were any defenses that you thought deserved to be on the list or if any of these defenses you thought did not deserve to be on here. Definitely let me know. I'd love to hear it. And until next time, guys, take it easy.